This episode of the HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast is proudly brought to you by Lifetime Decoys. Lifetime Decoys has set the new standard in decoy rigging equipment. Their signature, patent-pending designs use PVC-coated steel cable to prevent rust and corrosion, allow virtually zero line memory, while providing UV resistance and incredible strength and durability. Unlike monofilament, steel cable won't coil up and tangle with other lines because of excessive line memory. Their swivels and clips are made of high-quality stainless steel, and their aluminum ferrules are hydraulically pressed, providing unsurpassed strength. These materials combine to form the strongest, longest-lasting, and most tangle-proof decoy rigging equipment on the market today. They're also the only manufacturer who offers a warranty of three years as well as a money-back satisfaction guarantee. Check out Lifetime Decoys today at LifetimeDecoys.com. You are listening to the HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast, episode 113. This week on the show, we're joined by the guys from Alpha Dog Nutrition. We talk about how to keep your pet healthy and performing at its peak. All right, welcome to this, the 113th episode of the HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Palm, and we're your on-demand audio source for all things waterfowl and waterfowl hunting. Check us out at hpoutdoors.com. You can find our show on any of the quality podcast catchers out there, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Store, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all the good ones. If you're new to the show, we love five-star ratings and reviews. Helps waterfowl hunters just like you find our program. You can also find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you're a Facebook guy, you can head over to our HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast listeners group, chat with a bunch of the listeners of this show, and my co-host, Dan Harushka. Dan, what's up? Did you know, since you're going to be having a lack of sleep soon, the average person falls asleep in seven minutes? I am confident that I am well below the average on that stat. <laughs> I fall into the uh, asleep before the head hits the pillow category. Yeah, I'm pretty close to that. And I know I was talking with uh, Jacob Britton, a guy in our listeners group and a, a fellow I hunted with for the first time this year, uh, fairly local, but he was saying that he was up all night and kind of a grumpy guy today. So uh, so I thought, you know what, Josh is going to be that grumpy guy here pretty soon. So Yeah, buddy. Found, found a sleep fact for you. Yep. I'm going to be home with a new baby, so I'll be I'll just get in the group and be all grumpy all day too. Seems to be the thing to do, so I'll do that as well. But before we get into any further into this week's episode, I do just want to take a minute here to thank the companies that make this show possible, and we'll start with White Rock Decoys. You got decoy envy? Don't. When you figure out that you don't need a giant trailer full of heavy, expensive, full-body decoys to compete with the big boys, you just need the numbers. You can build your spread bigger, quicker, and lighter without sacrificing on quality gear. You can do it out of the back of your truck. Everything starts with a click, and you're ready to roll with White Rock. White Rock Decoys offers premium, engineered decoy systems for the new generation of mobile hunters. Use the HP Outdoors discount code to get 10% off your next order. White Rock Decoys, be a nomad. And Lucky Duck, about the only creature that they can't deceive is you. Lucky Duck's more than a brand. It's a lifestyle built around the subtle art of critter deception. So while you're focused on the business end of your shotgun or rifle, know that they're completely focused on what matters most, you. So whether you're in a duck blind, dove field, on the predator standard chasing turkeys, they're confident that their products will help you succeed. Check out their full lineup at LuckyDuck.com and keep up with their latest news by following them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 737 Duck and Coos Calls. Original design, select grade components, superior sound, and unparalleled service. 737 takes exceptional pride in producing the finest quality, best built premium calls on the market today. They're made right here in America and they're offered only direct to consumer through their website. Shipping to the U.S. is always free, and international orders are also now accepted online. 20-day money-back guarantee and a lifetime warranty accompany every call purchased. 737 Duck Calls lead the flock. 
Gunner Kennels, engineered for your dog, designed for travel, and built for your peace of mind. The G1 Kennel has set a new industry standard and put Gunner in a category all its own. Gunner Kennels was started to protect your pet and it continues to be at the center of everything that they do. They're dedicated to building the best and safest pet travel crate on the market because man's best friend deserves man's best kennel. Check out their G1 series of kennels and accessories at GunnerKennels.com. Also, Onyx Hunt. Onyx allows you to confidently navigate public and private land boundaries across the country. The Hunt app turns your smartphone into a fully functional GPS with more than 450 countrywide maps to give clear, private, and public land boundaries, trails, hunting-specific data, and more. Listeners of our show can get 20% off the Hunt app, either the premium or the elite subscription, when you use the discount code HPOutdoors at onyxmaps.com. Also, thank you to Camp Chef, Black Rifle Coffee Company, and Mount Airy Waterfowl Club of Warsaw, Virginia. Thank you to the companies that support this show, and we say it every week. Please support them in any way that you can. Makes it a little bit easier with a list of discount codes that we offer uh, through these companies on our website. So head over to the HP Outdoors discount page. Find out how you can save with Dunn Sporting Goods, Black Rifle Coffee Company, White Rock Decoy, 737 Duck Calls, Alpha Dog Nutrition, Gunner Kennels, The Ridge Wallet, Onyx Hunt, and Rex Specs. Make sure you take advantage of those discounts if you're in the market. All right, Dan. This week we're joined by the guys, uh, Chris and Joe from uh, Alpha Dog Nutrition, to talk a little bit about just, you know, maintaining your dog at peak performance and helping them to, you know, just enjoy their time in the field, bounce back quicker, and uh, maintain, you know, overall health. Because I think that's one thing that, you know, at least I, not being a a dog owner that of a dog that hunts uh, regularly, obviously, uh, I, I definitely take for granted when I watch a dog just working for me all morning, retrieving and stuff like that. You know, I think about, you know, Ben's dog Otis out there at Big Kansas. You know, that dog is just out there willing to run through a brick wall every single day. And he's doing that six days a week or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of work and they, they put it in and, uh, you know, it was, it's something that you gotta, that that I definitely wouldn't think about on a day-to-day basis, but I'm sure, you know, guys like Ben and those guys do. Yeah, man, I, I know we hunted over Otis and, and Lucille or Lucy quite a bit. And, you know, John Shu has his upland birds out there and those dogs all go 500 mile an hour. I mean, there's no stopping them unless you tell them to stop. And, and, you know, and then I come home and look at my dog, you know, she's getting older and, and just, uh, you know, thinking about what I can do to, to keep her going for a few more seasons. So it's a great conversation and I'm, you know, we're sitting here right now. I haven't given a weather update in a long time, but you know, we're at like 45 degrees today, mid December, no snow on the ground, barely. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it was like uh, in the 60s, like almost 60 degrees today. And, it, you know, it's just, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, 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 it, <laughs> they're calling for like a potential um, a potential snow, you know, snow shower on Christmas Eve here. And everyone's like losing their freaking minds because we just don't get <laughs> white Christmases here very often in Virginia. <laughs> Quite frankly, it's most usually like 70 degrees on Christmas. So it's super downer. But the thought of having some snow flurries is kind of exciting. So uh, everyone's pretty fired up about that. But yeah, our weather is, is crazy. And, you know. It's crazy. And this is coming out Monday. And then we'll only have two more episodes until next year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, we'll have this show plus two. And then we will be 2019 releases. So That's crazy. Yeah, and I'm taking off uh, a bunch of time from work, so I will be, I don't know how much hunting I'll be doing, honestly. Uh, you know, infant and my, my seven-year-old will be commanding my time, but I'm hoping to get some hunts in. We'll see. But uh, yeah, hopefully I'll at least have some more free time, or at least time at the house to do some other things other than, uh, you know, all the other crap I got going on, so... Yeah, hopefully it'll make our yes, podcasting life a little bit easier, but we'll see. I might just be super tired for like the next six months, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> that works. But yeah, a great convo today that we're about to get into, and um, looking forward, I'm, I'm going to be starting to use some of these products, I think, just because you know, old Kimber dog, she's a little slower to get up these days, but I mean, she's still, for nine and a half, man, she's still fast. You know, she still gets after it. Really, really not the limping so much after running or after hunting, but, you know, just, just getting a little older. So, yeah. good stuff. 
no doubt. Uh, the one thing I will say about this interview, um, I haven't had a chance as as of what we're talking about right now. I haven't had a chance to to, to edit any of it yet. So we did have a little bit of reception problems uh, at a couple points. So hopefully we're able to keep as much as possible to not lose the information. But um, you know, just kind of bear with us if there's some some points where the the phone signal is a little bit rough. It doesn't last that the whole way. So hang in there with if we have some of that in here. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy Convo and get some stuff out of it. So let's go ahead and welcome uh, Chris and Joe from Alpha Dog Nutrition to the show. All right, guys, joining us this week on the show to talk all things Dog nutrition and dog performance is Joe Scott and Chris Gazella of Alpha Dog Nutrition. Guys, welcome to the show. Great to see you guys. Having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, no, this is um this is good. I'm looking forward to this discussion. And we are doing the um the extreme remote record this week. You guys are both in separate locations and Dan and I are of course in separate locations. So we'll do our best to, to navigate this, but you know, I think um, as we've gotten kind of, as we've grown in our, in our Facebook listeners group and we uh, were fortunate enough to have a, an opportunity to get a discount code uh, for our listeners through you all. Um, I've seen more and more people talking about how they love alpha dog nutrition products. And I have to be honest, initially I wasn't that familiar with you guys because my dog like literally just is a house dog and doesn't hunt. And, you know, so I wasn't as tied in. So a lot of the retrieving things that we've covered on the show has been a learning experience for me to include, you know, the nutrition aspect of it and, you know, how to prepare your dogs to perform a high level. So um, I thought maybe it'd be good to just kind of talk a little bit about Alpha Dog's uh, sort of origins and kind of how y'all got started and sort of where the vision came, uh, you know, to kind of start this company. Yeah, uh, before I get into that, I will kind of touch on what you just said. Um, it, Alpha Dog Nutrition has been really cool in that we really don't advertise it all that much. A lot of it's word of mouth and it's grown with really pretty much organically, uh, which I think says a lot about, you know, what we're doing and the fact that it's actually helping people's dogs. but uh, So that's been really cool to see. Definitely. Um, but as far as how we started, basically, um, and this is Joe speaking, by the way, but um, basically I've got a, he's now seven, uh, seven-year-old English setter. Um, I was really into upland hunting, um, which is why with Chris, he's more into the waterfowl hunting, so we a pretty good team. But um, I feel like every dog owner can relate a little bit where one day you kind of wake up and, uh, you know, taking your dog for a walk or whatever it is, and you just kind of realize that uh, they're not a pup anymore and they're kind of um, on the back nine, if you will. <laughs> and you just kind of, I don't know any other way to describe it. Everyone else, I'm sure, goes through the same thing, but it just kind of hits you like a ton of bricks. Like, what can I do to make sure that my dog, uh, you know, gets the most out of what he's got that uh, he possibly can? So that's kind of when I started looking around for, you know, better nutrition for him. Um, everything from, you know, am I exercising him too much, too little? Uh, all that stuff. And as I was looking around at the different supplements on the market, uh, the joint supplements and uh, everything from like skin and coat to uh, uh, there's a couple other products out there for like helping rebound after a hunt. Um, and I started looking at the ingredients. I wasn't super thrilled. Uh, we're not here to bash any other company or anything. I just wasn't super thrilled uh, with all the inactive ingredients that a lot of those products had. Um, simply, to make, A lot of times it's to make you feel like you're getting more uh, for your money. And it's really just fillers that uh, A, really aren't doing your dog any good, and B, sometimes uh, work against your dog. I've seen like raw egg um, in 
and some supplements that sit on the shelf for a couple months. So obviously that's not good. Um, but, uh, so that's when I started reaching out to a nutritionist, uh, down in Florida. She had a PhD and just kind of, you know, is there anything else I can do for him? We recommend. Um, and we kicked it around for a little bit and kind of came to the conclusion that, um, I really wasn't super happy with anything else out there. And I kind of asked the question, well, uh, can you help me come up with something that would be better for him? Uh, and she said yes. So uh, she obviously got paid for her time, but um, we ended up coming up with some formulations uh, and reached out to a couple really good suppliers um, that do, uh, you know, human grade supplements that you'd see in your CVS or uh, Target or whatever, and um, got got to making it. And that's kind of how Alpha Dog Nutrition started. We're just me looking for something better for my dog. Um, and um, to be uh, completely transparent, the only way it's going to be cost effective is if we turn the end of the business because there's no way that uh, I was going to sink a um, couple dozen grand into some supplements for just my dog. So right. um, that's kind of where we started. And um, from there, it's just kind of uh, <clears throat> taken off with, um, I mean, you guys obviously know it with your podcast here. The hunting community is just an awesome community. So um, that's kind of how we got rolling. Yeah, and I think uh, that's that's hitting me more and more every time I take my dog out hunting now. She's nine and a half. So, you know, when um, we kind of hooked up for the 100th episode giveaway a little bit earlier than that, but um, definitely piqued my interest. And, you know, it, it takes me back to just thinking about, you know, uh, just the human race and, and say people that lift or work out a lot. And, you know, even if some of these people are on the strictest diet, but there's still taking either daily vitamin or, you know, maybe a pre-workout or a, a recovery. So, you know, it takes me back to training for Colorado and, and all that. So, um, you know, talking about my nine and a half year old dog, maybe, you know, go into a product that could help her, I guess the recovery time, you know, you kind of started, we could, we could start with that. What, what would help her, you know, after a hard hunt or going through icy water and really kind of draining her for her age, you know, what, what should I go with to, uh, to combat that? Sure. I can, I can help answer that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I'm Chris, by the way, in case, uh, in case Joe and I sound similar, <laughs> but, um, and at least kind of, I guess what I'll do is I'll kind of go over what products I, we recommend from what we have. And then I'll probably give a little bit of a, a high level view of all of our products that way the viewers can kind of see because each of the products, they all work together. They don't necessarily have to be used all at the same time or even, you know, together in the same year. Um, they can all be used independently as well. So, um, and I'll kind of base it a little bit of what I, I give my own. I have a five-year-old lab that uh, this year I'm starting to see him limp a little bit after a few long and hard uh Punts, so I, I get where you're coming from, but but a nine year old definitely got some years on on five. But first off, the the main product that we'd probably recommend is Vitality, which is basically an omega three fatty acid supplement, which is going to help for joint support. It's going to help lubricate the joints, give them a little bit more longevity, um, so that way you don't start seeing that. You know, of course, it's not going to be you know, a miracle product and, you know, magically work overnight. So we actually offer a 60 day guarantee. So that way you give it for 30, 60 days and you actually give some time for that supplement to work in and work for your dog. Um, the benefit to that actually, um, vitality also helps improve like skin and coat health. Um, I got a black lab so you can really tell if they have a shiny coat versus a white. Of course, they're horrible for taking pictures, but they at least have a shiny coat. <laughs> um, but Vitality also helps with like some reduction with allergies and symptoms of that nature. So I give that personally a daily basis. 
um, every time he eats is when I, you know, would give that to my own dog, and that's what I'd recommend for, for your nine-year-old dog as well. Um, the other one would be um, free range, um, which is basically glucosamine, MSM, and chondroitin, which is basically, <laughs> chondroitin, sorry, which is basically like an anti-inflammatory. So that's also just going to help the hips, elbows, spine, and joints in helping reduce some of the pain and, you know, discomfort. Um, to be honest, I, not that I take our own products, but I take glucosamine and MSM on a daily basis for my own joint pain. I'm a endurance, endurance athlete by, uh, by nature. So I actually take that on a daily basis just for my own, you know, joint pain. So it's kind of very similar to that. Um, but it's actually for, you know, canines and, and dogs in general. So that's just going to help support their, you know, cartilage and help repair that. Um, and that was actually, Syringe is probably one of my favorite products because you just sprinkle it on their food. And like the days where my dog just chooses not to eat, if I throw that on there, he immediately starts eating. So super easy. And those would be the two that, you know, for a nine-year-old lab, I would definitely recommend those on like a, a daily basis. But, um, so that kind of answers your first question. And then to, to add on to that, the other two products that we do have is Resurgence and Balance. Um, Resurgence is going to be like a recovery or post-workout, if you want to think of it that way. I tend to use it during um, hunting or training season. Uh, for me, at least, when I go on a pretty hard hunt, especially with if I go like pheasant hunting with my, my lab, I will give him... Um, I will give him, um, I will give it, sorry guys, I got my, my two kids found me in my office. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, we, we understand oh too well. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Okay. Mom will handle it. Um, <laughs> no, so recovery is just, I, I give that to my own dog after a long, long, hard hunt. We went up to North Dakota I would give it after, you know, a long pheasant hunt, and it just kind of helps re restore some of the lost nutrients and helps them take in some of the water that they've lost. Um, the other one is balance, which is basically a probiotic, which you could give on a daily basis. It's only going to help your immune system, create, like, good bacteria in their intestines. Um, I tend to give that to my, my own dog if he's kind of, he's going through a little like GI issue or something like that. Or even if I am planning a big trip out West or to me, I guess West is the Dakotas. Um, I would give that ahead of time. So that way they're, they're kind of, they're spiking their interest on food and getting a little bit more in their system. Mm -hmm. um, but both of those can be, you know, on a daily basis or, you know, here and there just kind of depends on how hard you work your dogs and, uh, you know, what their requirements are. But those are the four main products that we offer as of today. You know, I, I think one of the, the questions that I would have as a, as a guy, like, you know, you have such a, such a, a, a wide spectrum of, of guys and how much they work their dogs. Right. I mean, we just, um, you know, we were just out with uh, Ben Webster, big Kansas outdoors. And it's like, I watching I'm watching his dogs and those dogs are working when we're out in the field. I mean, there's birds constantly, they're running big long retrieves, blinds. I mean, they're like wound up, right? I mean, it's it's really exciting and, and great to watch. And then I contrast that to, you know, like the normal guy who maybe gets out on Saturday and Sunday or maybe just one day on the weekend and, you know, their dog, you know, works hard that day, but you know, they probably don't rebound quite as well, uh, you know, as, as far as like, they're not used to maybe working that hard and getting that excited because they're not doing it day in and day out. Um, is that maybe a misconception that some guys have when they're like, well, I only really hunt my dog one day a week, you know, so maybe they won't really need like a, you know, a product to help them get back, you know, kind of thing or whatever vice they maybe think, well, that's probably for the, the guys that are running their dogs hard, like every single day. Is that, is that a misconception that you guys ever hear? Or maybe something that, um, you know, could be an opportunity for the guy that's like, you know, Hey, maybe if I, you know, do this to my, you know, get this for my dog that one day a week that we get out, you know, they'll bounce back quicker and you know, all of those sorts of things. Chris, I'll take this one. Um, yeah. So, I completely agree with what you're saying. Um, 
I'll uh, I'll compare it to myself and Chris, not even our dogs. Uh, Chris runs home runs. I run like to the mailbox and back. <laughs> so um, like when when we're talking about you know like the nutritional needs for uh, like between myself and Chris, there's obviously a pretty big difference there. But I can pretty much guarantee you that um, if we go out on a long pheasant hunt or a long grouse hunt uh, through some thick cover, um, even though I'm not working as hard, I'm going to be feeling it a heck of a lot more the next day than Chris would, uh, which isn't to say that Chris isn't going, like, it isn't to say that neither one of us are going to benefit from it more. Um, but ultimately, you know, a body is a body, joints are joints, and um, things break down over time, and ultimately, um, you have to take care of it regardless of what you're putting it through. Uh, so, like, what I would say is, if we're going back to talking dogs, no matter what, I'm giving my dog, and Chris is giving his dog vitality and free range every day. Um now, if we are, um, you know, I, I'll go out, I do, a, we call it grouse week every year, um, but we go out up to my cabin in northern Wisconsin um, for a week and grouse hunt the whole week, and I'm making sure uh, my dog Trigger is getting resilience after every hunt to kind of replenish those lost nutrients. Um, whereas if we're only hunting once a week, I'm only giving it to them that one day after the hunt. Mm. Um, so that's kind of how I would break it down um, that way, if if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And even, you know, uh, I just had my 35th birthday, and I can tell a difference even if I'm not working out every day. If, you know, if you take your omega-3s or your krill oil or whatever it may be, you know, you can definitely feel a difference and just, uh, you know, your joints feel better. And I wouldn't say my hips hurt at all, but, you know, uh, talking to or about dogs, you know, I'm sure that Kimber would uh, would do well on that and feel a lot better than she does. And even getting up out of bed or whatever it may be, you know, once you hit that nine-year-old mark it it seems like she's slowed down a little bit this year but um what are your thoughts on on puppies is there a weight restriction that you guys see that that they shouldn't use these prior to that's actually probably our most common question i'm really glad you asked it because i was hadn't thought to bring it up but um so what we typically recommend is we want like the dog's general frame to stack growing which isn't to say, like, you know, obviously the dog kind of grows height-wise and everything, and their frame builds out, and then they kind of fill out uh, muscle-wise. So we want that frame to be done um, being built out uh, so that we're not kind of educating their... I mean, you could almost compare it to duck hunting. You don't want to educate those ducks to not come in and know what to look for because they're not going to do it. You don't want to educate your dog's joints um, to say, hey, I've got all um, this glucosamine and chondroitin MSM coming in anyways. I don't need to work as hard to make it when all that stuff's actually being developed. Um, because once that, once what a lot of people don't realize is once that cartilage and everything in those joints is gone, uh, you can't really get it back. It doesn't really grow back. Um, so that's kind of... Um, that would be kind of where what I would say to that. Hmm. So and I'll kind of add to that too, yeah, Joe. Go ahead. Is you you ask the question of like, you know, is there a weight scale or a weight base? So a couple of the products actually, I should say three of them, um, actually have like a dosing chart on all of the the nubs or cartons, which actually specifies, you know, for your weight class of your dog on how many scoops they would need. Um, starting in the first month to going to how many they're going to need to sustain that product. Um, as far as vitality goes, um, that's just like a, a capsule, so that's just one a day. But um, the other ones are actually weight based, so and it's written right on our our, our product itself. Mm. What other what other concerns or considerations should a dog or you know dog owner have before uh, 
getting their dog, you know, not just on your product, but really in, a, in any product, but, you know, specific for you guys, like, you know, what about dogs with, you know, allergies or any other, you know, sensitivities that, that a hunter or a guy should be aware of before introducing their, their, uh, you know, their dog into something like this? Chris, do you want to talk about like knee surgeries and stuff and why that is a big deal? Um, you can touch bases. You might know a little bit more on that than I do, to be honest. All right. I'll give them a pause here and then. So the one, one thing that I would definitely say is if your dog has had like ACL surgery or MCL surgery or really any kind of like joint surgery, um, you really need to be thinking about a joint supplement as early as possible. Um, because all that scar tissue is still in there and that's really going to, uh, that's going to show up a lot sooner than it would in that specific joint than it would in another dog with that hadn't had that kind of injury like that. So that's definitely one thing that I would, um, if, if your dog has had a, a surgery like that, definitely look into it, whether it's our product, um, or someone else's, you know, obviously, I'm obviously unbiased, but definitely do what you can to take care of your dog um, more than just having that surgery done because they're going to feel it uh, significantly earlier on than uh, what they normally would. That'll make sense too. And I'm I'm looking at your website right now, and it looks like uh, three of the four are powders, and the, and the Vitality is a pill. Is that like a a capsule or a chewable, do do dogs have any issue taking that? And do you have any, you know, I know if, if some dogs are on pills and they just, you know, it doesn't matter if it's wrapped in, in bacon, sometimes they figure out how to spit it out. So do you have any, do you have any uh, tips to get that taken care of? I can, I don't know if you can speak to this as much, Joe. I don't know if your dog does a little bit better. Like my dog that dude, like, he can find a pill in anything. Um, so I, I will, I will say, like, he he does struggle. Um, and there is a couple options that do work for him, though. Um, they do make some pill poppers that work fine. It's just basically like a treat. Um, and the other option, I usually just put in a little piece of food. Um, you know, whether it's a little turkey meat or something like that, and he he doesn't, you know, ever spit it up from that. But I know a lot of dogs where you just pop it right on their food and they eat it like no big deal. So I, I got one that's a, a little bit pickier than we do. Yeah, my dog Trigger, you can get this dog to say about a rock and he's going to eat it. So he is a terrible taste testing <laughs> dog. Um, but uh, my parents had a dog that was super picky and she was my taste testing dog. So the powders are all uh, flavored. Uh, and basically, um, we went through a couple of iterations where I we weren't we weren't gonna hit go until she was um scarfed it down and she actually got to the point where you'd throw food down for her and she'd wait for you to sprinkle the um free range on top of it before she would start eating. <laughs> so that that was a good wow. sign. That's that's my dog right there for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So, you know, I gotta I gotta ask. You guys kinda come from different uh hunting perspectives as far as you know the upland game and the waterfowl game um what kind of competitions do you guys have going between the dogs because i mean i've i've seen on the facebook group a lot of a lot of discussion about you know the most versatile dog and um you know all of these things so i'm sure you guys have some friendly competitions when you're out there you know chasing you know chasing upland game versus in the waterfowl uh you know swamp or marsh or whatever it is so um, you know, how do you guys, what do, where do you guys stand on that? Who's, uh, who's got better command out there in the field? I, I wish, I wish I could say that like there was this great competition, but I, I was blessed to hunt with Joe since I was probably 13 or 14. And, and, and Joe came from a family that always had setters or pointers. I My family never had hunting dogs. My dog is the first hunting dog that, you know, ever entered into my family. They're always house pets. So we are totally two different spectrums, but it's really nice when you go pheasant hunting because, or upland, because Joe's dog points, mine retrieves, <laughs> and it's just, 
it, it's like the yin and the yang. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I will say I I don't know that we really even have like a competition between the two of us. I mean, we're competitive. We compete in other things, but between the dogs, um, like you said, it's kind of the yin and the yang. Triggers obviously for a duck or goose hunting, trigger stays home because <laughs> there's no way to get him to sit still while they're coming in. But um, the, when we're out. When we're out pheasant hunting, I mean, Trevor's great for pointing and Drake's awesome. Chris's dog, Drake, he's awesome for uh, bringing him back because Trevor really doesn't retrieve. He'll pin him, he'll pin him down, but he won't really bring him back. So it's honestly having a setter and a lab, I feel like, is probably one of the most like dynamic pairs that you can have. And that's actually, um, I'll always have a pointing dog. But I'm actually eyeing up um, a couple uh, breedings on labs, and it's, the goal is, uh, if I can get it okayed with my wife, the goal is to have both a lab and a setter uh, going forward. Yeah, there you go. Just straight teamwork. So uh, Josh didn't ask it, but I'm going to ask it for him. You know, you, you said the the vitality helps on... Um, Quite a few things, but his dog is prone to ear infections. So is there, is Vitality going to help his dog with, you know, some of the allergies and that might create the ear infections that his dog is getting? Dan is stealing my thunder. God. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's, well, hey, it's, you went, it's a, it's you went into the question. dog competition. So it is a, it is you went into the dog competition. I didn't know if you were going to miss it or not. No, no, no. It's a very valid, valid concern of mine. And... If you guys have a solution to ear infection problems, take my money now. <laughs> <laughs> so we never want to promise anything that we're not actually, uh, you know, fixing. So I will say that none of our products are like intended to help with ear infections. Uh, Omega threes will help with allergies, which is obviously different than ear infections. Um, but we don't currently have anything that would help help you out with that unfortunately yeah. um, but that well, being said i've got a son in the other room now that's going on four ear infections in the last six weeks so it's really yeah, yeah my my dog really he really battles uh you know seasonal seasonable allergies seasonal allergies but like right now uh you know his his paws and his skin are so dry with the cold air um and he's just like constantly itching and it drives me crazy and uh, we've done a lot of different things to um you know, try to help him, but it, it actually got to the point where I can't remember when it was, but it was sometime in the last year, he got shaking his head so bad that he had a hematoma form in his ear and we had to have like surgery on his ear to, to cut it out. Um, and he, you know, had to wear like a head wrap and a cone forever and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I'm over all that stuff. Let's just say that. <laughs> Cones are no fun. Cone goes on my dog and that thing turns into a weapon. Yeah. That is that is no fun. No doubt. No, but no, to your answer like your question though, like fill oil will help. Um, you know, it has a very like holistic benefit for, you know, skin and coat and joints. Like it's a great umbrella and a good starting point for, you know, reducing some of the allergies and itchy skins and um I know there's there's kind of two different Kinds out there, it's either fish oil or krill oil. Ours is actually derived from krill oil, which is just it, essentially what it means to a dog is it's a little bit um, easier to digest. So, and then it contains a little bit less of like the toxins found in like fish oil because they're typically found from like bottom feeding, you know, fish. Mm -hmm. um, but that would be a good starting point as far as kind of trying to work on some things with skin and coat. Um, I haven't seen it in my dog, but I know I have good friends that have, you know, labs and they're like polar opposites. I mean, huh. I think he was spending like 50 bucks for like a 10 pound bag of allergy something prescribed food. And I'm just like, my goodness, yeah. I'm happy I got the dog I got. <laughs> yeah, that stuff, uh, it can get pricey. There's no question when you go, when you, when you get into all that and, yeah, that's the thing. It's like uh, at one point my dog, I mean, this is complete sidebar, so I apologize. But at one point my dog had an ear infection with this stuff that looked like black tar in his ear. And 
uh, we had to have it cultured to figure out what it was. And it was basically a mutated form of uh, infection that literally mutated uh, to be resistant to the ear cream that we were putting in his ear that had been clearing it up for, you know, a while. So, like, I guess that's one of the the problems of treating things symptomatic, sim, sim, <laughs> symptomatically. Uh, you know, so we had to, like, get this special concoction of, like, this crap that... Uh, and kill it off and thankfully <laughs> thankfully that's never come back but i mean it's like man you know it, it's one of those things where i think you know it's it's when you look at dogs and and you, you know you get so excited about what 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 they can do for your hunting experience and companionship and uh, being around the family and all that kind of stuff and a lot of guys i think just tend to overlook those hidden costs i call it you know and it's just like it's just like dental coverage, right? Is when I look at products like this that can help your dog rebound and recover, uh, it's like dental coverage. I, I, it's, you know, my dental coverage does really well if I'm just going to get cleanings and maintenance and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. But if I got to have a crown put on, they pay a little bit, but not a lot, and it's very expensive to address those things. So it's like, you know, I feel like little products and things like this that you guys have can help just that preventative piece to help your dog, you know, rebound and also, uh, you know, just handle the rigor that they go through as not only like high driven dogs, most of them, but just some of the conditions that they're forced into. Um, you know, just recently, you know, we were talking last week on the show about, uh, you know, working with, uh, rec specs because, you know, dogs just have so frequent eye, you know, injuries and things like that because of what we put them into as hunters, you know, and it's the same thing on just the impact of their body, uh, so it's it's definitely something that I think that probably gets overlooked a little bit, and until it's late in the game and you got a vet bill because your dog is struggling from you know this condition because it's just been doing something like this for so long or whatever the case might be. Yeah, and that's something that I really um, I always compare it to taking care of your truck. Right, um, it's a heck of a lot easier and less expensive to change the oil every three thousand six thousand miles, whatever you decide to do than it is to completely ignore it and deal with the major issue that's going to come as a result of ignoring it. Um, it's going to be a lot a lot more expensive, and um, ultimately your truck's never going to be the same. Um, and that's kind of what I compare you know, our bodies to, where you got to take care of it. It's the only one you get, um, and do what you can to make sure you're putting good things into it. Uh, and getting good exercise, uh, you know, for both yourself and your dog, and kind of go from there. Now, now you're making me feel like I need to go run a marathon or start working out hardcore again. <laughs> no, I, I'd never, I'd never try and talk you into Chris. Might I would never, <laughs> I would never try and talk you into that. <laughs> oh yeah. So Josh, you want to? We can talk a little hunting here and, you know, uh, you know, Chris, you, you do some blogging too, some writing and, um, you know, we had Tony Vandemore on, man, it's been a couple of years now, but, uh, the one piece you wrote that is on our website was out of Habitat Flat. So maybe give us a little rundown of, of their operation from a hunting standpoint, you know, not a, not a owner's standpoint and just how cool of a place that is. Yeah, I'm sure it's actually kind of the the neat part about working with Joe. He's he's honestly the one that got me started into kind of blogging. He actually had an upline and still does um, a website that he routinely writes on. He kind of said, "Hey, why don't you go waterfall one?" And they both kind of blossomed, and, and they work fantastic for me to learn about new products. My wife thinks I know what mean, but uh, there's some really cool stuff out there. So, actually, last year, we had the opportunity with Elf Dog to be some filming at, um, at Habitat Flats, and we went for early teal season. And, yeah, you're absolutely right. Coming from, like, a non-ownership side, I know I've listened to Tony's podcast as well as Ira's, which are, I mean, man, they've got some cool, cool, interesting uh, businesses that they're running. But they have a, a really neat, neat operation that's very um it's kind of the full all-inclusive if you want to put it for for duck hunting um we didn't have the opportunity to see it when the mallards are pouring into their timber holes 
Um, but we had a couple good days where the Chia were screaming by, and, and for, for both of us, I've never seen something like that. I lived in Missouri for a couple of years, but I never had the opportunity to hunt it. So uh, being in that area where you're kind of in the middle of nowhere and there's this, you know, beautiful hunting lodge, essentially, in uh, Sumner, Missouri, it's pretty pretty amazing. And then uh, we had the opportunity to, um, one of the, or our guy that we had for that weekend, um, he kind of asked us, asked us in the afternoon if we want to go kind of check out some of their blinds and stuff like that. So we got the full tour of, you know, all the different honey holes that they have and the operation and, you know, however you want to call it, you know, the farming for ducks, which is, I mean, it's crazy. It's really cool. Hmm. Can I, and that can I just really take one? Habitat flats. I mean, we're not associated with Habitat Flats at all, but if you get a chance to save up and head out there, it is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. I was going to say, can I just take a second to give a shout out to to Ira's Instagram stories from from his vet clinic? <laughs> does anyone else does anyone else watch that? No. I oh my seen gosh. It. All right. Well, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but just make sure that you like uh turn the notifications on or whatever you need to do, but his Instagram stories might be the funniest thing on the gram. <laughs> They are literally the gram. They're on the gram. <laughs> like just, just he had a dog laying there today, and you know he's doing some kind of surgery too. But it it fell asleep with its eyes open, and he's you know just puts a caption here like bad trip, you know like it's <laughs> tripping tripping out. <laughs> it's just like, but the amount of the amount of surgeries that he puts up there is it's hilarious. Just the captions and everything. It's just it's funny. It's really funny. <laughs> so you guys are you're oh, out in Wisconsin. You're out in Wisconsin. Um, what's your typical like waterfowl season looking like? You know, you guys. We talked a little bit about this, but are you typically pursuing uh, geese or ducks or you know, you guys in the field, you in marshes? Like, what's your typical uh, setup that you guys are getting into out there? Sure, um, I'm sure we both can talk about this, but. So we, we thankfully get to start at the beginning of September um, as far as shooting teal and early uh, geese. Um, and then that basically takes us to October, end of September is actually when we get actually duck hunt. Um, that's when the two seasons kind of combine and things get a little bit better. Our For me, early season where I'm at is pretty, it's tough. It's a grind. It's, you know, you either hit it right or you, you know, you're busting and spending some, some quite a few weekends just scratch your head running into the worst country in the world. But uh, Joe's got a pretty good area where he's at just being closer to the bigger bodies of water. Um, this early season, he definitely had a lot more geese up by him. So we were actually targeting some geese and we're about two and a half hours away from each other, two hours. So we tend to try and you know, get back and forth to each other to hunt a few times. But right now we're in this kind of weird lull where the DNR this year, um, they took a two-week break for our goose season, so we're going to start back up on the this coming weekend, and then we go to, like, beginning of January. So we got a few more weeks left of uh, goose hunting, and that's pretty much what we're primarily targeting right now. I was going to say, are there, do you guys get any lessers where you're at? Because, you know, being out in Kansas... Uh, you know, living here in Pennsylvania, all we have are, are honkers and, you know, the bigger geese. And then we go out to Kansas and I don't know, 99% are the lessers. And, you know, they get excited when some of the big geese come down. So I, I just from talking to other people, I think that you guys have the bigger geese, but where do the, where do the lessers start? It has to be fairly close to you, I would assume. Yeah. For for us, we start seeing lessers like later in the season, like mid to late season. We'll start, you know, shooting lessers, which it gets pretty fun, just because you can obviously tell the difference between the big geese and them. Um, I'm a little jealous. You guys had the opportunity to go with Big Kansas. That was like it was. Uh, I talked to Ben quite a few times, and uh, he's always telling me I should come down there. And I just uh, his season conflicts with mine, so it's, it's a conflicting. Uh, ideology for me to leave my season. 
but it definitely looks like seen some cool videos that those guys put on with last year's but well, we won't see we start seeing them for the latest season. Um I was actually bummed but happy. Last week we had six snow geese in a roosting pond around here, which I have I haven't seen snows in years, so um but of course they came when the season was closed, so we can go after them. <laughs> And everything fills up, so now they, they push out. So Yeah, I know the I mean it's so it was very eye opening for us to go out there with big Kansas says guys, you know, in the Atlantic Flyway and just the sheer volume and you know, it makes it even harder to wrap my head around the fact that we're having, you know, season reductions next year and limit reductions and things like that. And it's just it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, it's just hard to fathom such that such a discrepancy and um you know so you you know, we 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 had that and then we had just like this crazy weather right so the week the week leading up to us getting out there they get hit with this this blizzard out of nowhere and then the day we land it's 60 degrees like it's just like shorts weather and we get like a huge rainstorm with like thunder and lightning it was just wild like it was like like literally we got a little bit of everything out there uh, you know, in the, in the, in just a couple of days that we were there. So it was a really, really cool experience. And, um, you know, it just makes me super jealous of you guys that are out there in that, that area of the country that get to experience those big pushes coming out of the, you know, the, the breeding grounds and stuff like that, where we just don't get that kind of experience here. And it's just, um, you know, it's hard. I mean, you can see why it's hard to recruit hunters and stuff in this area, you know, kids and things like that. Cause there's still States here that you can't hunt on Sundays and now they're talking about limiting the season and limiting the bag limit. So it's like Maryland, for example, if you can't hunt on Sunday because your kids got, you know, basketball practice or whatever on Saturday mornings, and you can't get them out in the field on Sunday and it's only a 30 day season. It's like, well, when's the opportunity to get, you know, get your kids out there and stuff. So it's really kind of unfortunate. And, uh, you know, when I went out to Kansas, I was like, man, this is, this is what waterfowl hunting is supposed to be. Like, this is what you dream about. And I'm just so envious of, you know, those that get to experience that, that type of migration that we just don't see here. Yeah. No, that's, that's very true. I mean, uh, I'm thankful for what Wisconsin did this year. We, they actually bumped our goose limit up by one, which, you know, is huge. I mean, uh, this is the first time we've ever been able to shoot equal amounts of ducks and geese, you know, in the same given year. And, you know, it, it's a lot of work throwing out, 200 decoys for I, I typically hunt with just one other guy um every now and then we have three but uh we keep it small and it's a lot of work throwing out all those decoys for you know last year was four birds so i i would understand you know for a kid coming out just not seeing that that full excitement of being able to be out there for a while and you know join in on that you know social aspect of it of watching you know other guys be excited to to see that many birds but yeah, it's it's interesting what's happening across the country, and I, I've never had the option to to live in a different you know fly away and see what that's like. But uh, do you, you know, do you guys do you guys ever uh, get up to do any uh, hunting on the Great Lakes there and do dive, you know any, get any diver hunts in and stuff like that? I do. Um, my parents actually still live up in Green Bay, which I have a boat and I actually live up there, so I can actually go out on the bay. Um, we go hunt up there, and it's it's a blast. Like I, I know there's a lot of guys out there that like I only go to or I only shoot mallards, or like I love the like the mass differences of you know requirements of what hunting from divers to puddle ducks. So I enjoy going up there and shooting divers. I mean, it's it's a busy place, but uh, you know, there's, there's it's a lot of fun being able to shoot mixed bags, and you know, sometimes you hit it right, sometimes you don't. So. Man, that that sounds like a blast, and uh, you know we we have quite a few listeners from Wisconsin, and and they all seem to have, you know, very deep roots in in waterfowl and and whitetail. But you know, it seems like we're talking to a lot more obviously waterfowl hunters, but it just seems like a really really cool place. And you know, like what you were saying, <clears throat> setting up a bunch of decoys for four geese or whatever you guys have out there, you know, the, I'm just thinking of Maryland, the Eastern shore there, it's all AP zone there. So they're going from two geese, Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but two geese to one and a, 
they're getting cut down to a 30 day season in the AP zone. So, I mean, all those outfitters and I mean, it's just, and the, the Mallard reduction on top of that, it's, it's going to be tough, you know, tough for recruitment, like you said, and, and just tough for a lot of, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people will still go out and just enjoy the time, but it's it's tough to combat that against you know xbox or whatever kids want to do and they can stay warm and and entertained and keep their belly full just by going to the refrigerator in the other room rather than sitting in a cold duck blind so it is tough it's really tough that that is a really good point because like you know chris has a a couple of young kids and i've got a one and a half year old um you know starting to think about uh taking them out with us i won't bring him grouse hunting with me that's way too much walking but uh one of the reasons that i got into duck hunting this year was um a because chris got me into it thank you chris um (laughs) and b uh you know i it's something that you know realistically i can you know hopefully line up a day where the weather's decent um the birds are hopefully going to be there um, quite frankly, I really don't care if I shoot anything. I'm just going to have a great time with him out there, um, and hopefully just get him exposed to it. Uh, but like you said, if, if all you can do is potentially shoot one bird, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of, uh, lugging around and prepping for, you know, one bird. If, if you're just going you and your son, so you're hopefully not, uh, or daughter, um, hopefully not messing up everyone else's hunt and all that so that that is that's tough yeah you know it's it it is but it wasn't that long ago that the eastern shore of maryland had a moratorium on goose hunting and you couldn't kill canada geese there and you know so like we've seen that pendulum swing up there and a lot of places i would say would be death like their waterfowl hunting and you know that that culture would be decimated but the roots run so deep in the, on the Eastern shore with goose hunting in that um, if there is a place that could survive something like that, I do believe it is, it is the Eastern shore. So I have no doubt that it will have its take its toll on, on outfitters and things, but there will still be people out there to shoot one goose. I guarantee it. You know, that it's not like they're going to, they're going to pack it in up there, but you know, hopefully it's just a, a short, a short thing and the, you know, the breeding numbers get better and, you know, I'm obviously, uh, you know, conserving the resources, the number one priority above all else. So hopefully that's a quick rebound, but, um, you know, I, I don't know about you, Dan. I don't know if you've got anything else that you wanted to hit, but, um, you know, I appreciate you guys taking some time with us here this evening to, to talk with it, with us about, um, you know, your products and just sort of some of the things that the guys, guys can do to kind of help, you know, their dogs rebound and perform better in the field. And it's one of those things like we talked about, you know, you, you use the parallel, you know, you compared it to taking care of your truck. I compared it to my terrible dental insurance, but you know, it's like, you know, a little bit of preventative maintenance can really go a long way. And um, I don't know if you had anything else, Dan, but um, I've, I've taken a lot out of this conversation and I'm um, and before <laughs> I'm going to pull Dan one more thing. Um, you know, I think I was glad that you gave it, uh, were able to give a high level overview of your products, because I think that's one of the most intimidating things about stuff like this. And I'll use myself for an example. Like, you know, I've been an athlete my entire life. I've worked, you know, and all this, whatever I go to like mountain ops and I see all this stuff and all these different names. And I'm like, what is all this? Like, you know, I have no clue what any of this is and what do I want to use or whatever. So to have that, that high level kind of quick review, I think is really going to be helpful for people out there uh, listening that have been either using some of your products or potentially considering using some of your stuff. About all that. And, uh, you know, being able to provide the, the listeners with some information about our products and, um, I know Joe always says it, you know, at some point, you know, he, he always comes into it and he goes, you know, I, I almost accidentally started an apparel company because uh, we actually sell a lot of hats because there's a lot of curious people out there that, yeah. you know, start looking at the brand and usually it's, you know, it's like the gateway or segue into like, you know, figuring out and learning about our brand and product. And uh, um, and that's where like with our with our discount, you know, with that we offer through, you know, HP Outdoor listeners. I mean, that encompasses everything from material to to products, and um, but the, our focus is just you know communicating and uh, working with other hunters. And I know 
Joe gets to work on the customer service side a little bit more, so he gets to always hear the, the cool stories and stuff like that. So it's fun. It's been fun. Yeah, that's the yeah. biggest thing. Is, is this is just, I mean, it, it's just fun. It really is. You know, we're talking with other hunters, and, you know, without alpha dog nutrition, we'd never be able to talk to people about, you know, hunting out on the East Coast and just, you know, BSing with people about, um, you know, they they hit us up about a customer service thing and we end up talking for 10 minutes about, you know, grouse hunting or whatever it is. And it, it's just fun. It really is. And it's it's been a really fun ride and it's uh, going to continue to, uh, it's going to continue to be fun going down the road, so. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. And I was just I was just gonna say, you know, now that my dog is older and and I look at all the Facebook posts about guys losing their dogs or anything like that and you know, they always say if I could just have one more hunt and and in reality where I'm sitting right now, you know, if if Kimber starts taking some of this stuff, it might get me a whole extra season. You know, she's not she's still fast, she still gets after it, but you know, she is slowing down and, and if when that day comes, when I try and retire her, or however I go about it, you know, this, this might, uh, might be something that helps push me one more year to, to keep her going. So it's a, uh, it was a good chat. I appreciate, appreciate the time and, and I hope you guys have a, a great rest of the season. Thanks. Thank you guys. Okay, yeah, thanks so much well. guys. All right, thanks to Joe and Chris for spending some time with us and getting us up to speed on on what they got going on at Alpha Dog and how it can help us uh, keep our pups healthy and strong and performing at their peak. What do you think, Dan? You got something uh, after hearing that that you think Kimber could probably benefit from? Yeah, you know, definitely the uh, the free range and the vitality. Um, resurgence if we if we hit the field a couple of days and and the balance i mean that's all stuff that it's funny because you think about it on a on a daily basis for yourself you know the probiotics and and acrylic oil and stuff that really can make a difference in your in your own personal health and it's like why don't you give it to your dog and now you know they have a, a great product going and a lot of a lot of great reviews from people that we know and respect that that have a lot of dogs so um yeah, I see no reason not to use it. You know, they gave our listeners a discount code, so I'll be trying it out, I think, and uh, we'll see see if it helps out. Good deal. What uh, what else you got for us this week? Are you got anything? Um, I just feel like you haven't been as random as you as you normally are. <laughs> well, you know, I did I did throw <laughs> I did throw out. Ira McCulley's Instagram stories. And yeah, if you that, are on true. Instagram, you need to follow him and, and watch his stories, put notifications on. It's, it's funny. It's hilarious. So no, but you know what? Uh, you know, still following Ben out at BKO and just seeing what people are doing, um, more through text. Cause they're, they're still on a social media blackout of sorts. And, Man, they're still just crushing it. And then you see people saying that there's no birds in Kansas. And I said, that's the biggest oxymoron I've ever heard of after after being out there for a few days and seeing thousands of birds fly over you. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, we're some of the state is out right now. Some of it's in. Some of it's coming in Monday. Uh, Trav's coming home from, from London. So I'm probably going to get to meet up with him and hunt for the first time this year. So that'll be fun. Uh, I know he's swinging by to get some jerk rigs from me this this weekend, and he'll nice. be hunting with his dad. And um, you know, just some good things going on. Christmas coming up, so going through all that, getting ready, and and then I'll be heading out at the after Christmas to do some more hunting. Yeah, very cool. Our season is out currently. Comes back in on the fifteenth, so I'm hoping to get a couple hunts maybe before. The baby's born. Baby's due January 3rd, but my wife is 37 weeks along, so it could literally come at any day, uh, and they would not try to stop it or anything like that. So we're definitely 
kind of gearing down for that and uh, hopefully grab a few hunts between now and then. But I can tell you right now. You're getting close, man. You oh, yeah. excited or what? Yeah, I mean, it's just too chaotic right now to be excited. I mean, I got too much crap going on and I'm just trying to get everything done. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just not there yet as far as the excitement level, but it's not for any reason other than just I haven't had time to be excited. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I will say I've also not had time to do any cleaning of my stuff from Kansas. So my shotgun no. still looks the exact same as it did when I left there, which is filthy dirty. And uh, so I, I need to I need to get get in on that a little bit and clean it up but just haven't got around to it yet man yeah i did uh actually i was i know you won't believe it but i was very prompt on getting my stuff out and washed and and kind of put away which is not my usual i feel like we're kind of kind of switch spots there but yeah well Aaron's you've, like, got, it looks you've like, got another looks hunt. Like, you've got another hunt coming up I, I do that, that, you know, you're going to need to pack for and stuff. So that that's probably why I don't have that going on. So I could literally take my stuff out the way it is and still, you know, and just so hunt it. after it. Yeah. And, and hunt locally with it. No big deal. But, uh, yeah. Um, locally we, we do add, like I said, today was in the forties. So we, we, have had a thin layer of ice on most of our water around here, even Conneaut Lake, which is a, a deeper lake and, uh, which is still, so if it's, you know, no wind, it kind of freezes quick, but, um, kind of iced up. There are a lot of geese in the area. So well, late season might be good up here. Yeah. Uh, I have no doubt. I think our season, I mean, we've had some water locking up too recently. I, I think our, you know, I don't know if if the weather turns out the way that it appears that it might, we might get some good pushes here and into, into the late season. So I have no doubt the divers will be here. People will be beating up on buffies and stuff like that. It's just all, are we going to get the reds and the cans that come down with them? So hmm. we shall see. Uh, <clears throat> I do have one more thing. Um, of you do. So right now on iTunes, uh, we always ask for, you know, Ratings and reviews, five star if you want. Write a write a review, but we're at four hundred and thirty two. It might actually be up because I know a few people have written more. But once we hit four hundred and fifty reviews on iTunes, we're giving away a Mustang Survival inflatable PFD, which yep. they are awesome. They are um, not super cheap, but they are very comfortable. They're you know the inflatable, so if the manual inflate and um actually it's right up here with me but um if you're listening to this and you want to be able to get in on that all you have to do is go write a review send us a screenshot either on facebook or instagram or email or whatever and you'll be entered to do that so once we hit 450 we will give away the pfd and we've had a lot, a lot of people still emailing us stories and thanking us for that episode because they have now worn that. And there have been a few people that have uh, sunk their boats and said thank you for essentially saving our life because they hadn't worn them before. And um, that kind of hits home, you know, when you when you get a message like that saying thanks for saving our life from something that we talked about and had Brian on here talking about. And just when they usually would just stuff it under the seat, they decide to put it, put it on properly and, and you know, their boat capsized for whatever reason. And, and they're there to, they're live to send an email about it. It's, uh, it's one of the best feelings that I've had on this end of the microphone. Yeah. I, I would echo everything that you said. And, I think just the, you know, seeing people literally going to the store after they heard the episode and buying a life jacket for them, their dad, their brother, their hunting buddy, whoever it is, uh, is really, really feels good. And um, I'm really proud of not us. I'm proud of, you know, everyone that listens to the show that, that, that did that because that's, you know, you, you took the step to save, you know, to save yourself. That's, you know, that's not nothing that we've did. You, you did it. And uh, life jackets are like exercise. The best one for you is the one that you're going to wear 
the best exercise for you is the one that you're going to do every day. So the best life jacket for you is one that you'll wear every day. So find out which one, what is, what that is, what that, what's going to work for you, get one and wear it every day. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, make sure you, at the end of the hunt, you come home and, uh, get back to the ones that love you. So, all right, man, what else you got? You got anything else here before we uh, put a bow on this week? No, you know, finally starting to get through some of the photography and whatnot from, uh, and whatnot from the trip and whatnot. That's my first whatnot in like four weeks. <laughs> I'm sure it's not four weeks, but okay. <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah, some, some cool stuff that we'll be putting out and, uh, just excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Just in, yes, a, in a good, in a good place right now, man, for December and not having three feet of snow, just kind of, kind of different for us. And it's, I don't know. Just in a good good place right just now. Good vibes. My, good vibes, man. So my so my 737 duck call that when I had to clean sand out of it out in Kansas and I shoved it back in and re really got kinked because it was outside of the the barrel. Um, I had some some extra reeds laying around and cut it exactly the same. Got it up and running. Super pumped about it. And that is my victory story for today. Look at you, you little MacGyver. Do you? How about it? Yeah. I was excited about it. Look at you, man. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, put a bow on this week. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Actually, stand by. Before I do that, I do need to take a second just to thank Lifetime Decoys, White Rock Decoys, Lucky Duck, 737 Duck and Goose Calls, Gunner Kennels, Onyx Hunt, Camp Chef, Black Rifle Coffee Company, and Mount Airy Waterfowl Club of Warsaw, Virginia. Thank you to the companies that support this show. Please support them in any way that you can. All right, that does it for episode 113. Want to appreciate want to th- want to thank the guys from Alpha Dog Nutrition for coming on and spending some time with us, educating us on their products and how we can help our pups perform better for longer in the field. If you're new to the show, head over to iTunes, check out all of our past episodes, leave five-star rating and review, help other hunters just like you find our new show. We're winding down 2018, but we'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Till then, for Dan, I'm Josh. Take care.